And we're ready. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. My name is Anahita Azrahimi, and I'm the Executive and Creative Director at Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. I would like to welcome you all to our 60th anniversary and today's talk, Art Collectors in Conversation with Farnoosh Talai and Hirbot Heeman. These series are co-presented with the Power Plant Contemporary Art Gallery and moderated by Joshua Heeman, Curator of Education and Public Programs at the Power Plant. I can't tell you how many times we hear from collectors and art lovers here that they purchased their piece, first piece of art uh, here at Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. And I think one of the reasons for that is because um, for those of you who know uh, what Toronto Outdoor Art Fair is and where it takes place, it's, uh, there are no barriers uh, of any kind. Um, there are no entry points, no walls, and it's just um, direct conversation with the artists and connections with them. And this is one of my favorite uh, parts of TOAF, something that uh, I absolutely love about the fair. Uh, the intention behind these conversations uh, and these series is to hear about why people collect art, how do they do it, and what do they do with their collections. And uh, some housekeeping notes here. I would like to remind you that you're recording this talk and we're gonna broadcast it on our social media channel. So um, there's no uh, chat function, but if you have any questions, just submit it here and we'll get back to you about it. And uh, also I'm inviting you to take a look at Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. It's our 60th anniversary, as I said, and um, we have a showcase of 400 artists from across Canada, and the works are absolutely stunning. Uh, so meet our artists at toaf.ca, and hopefully you find a great piece of art for your spaces. So now I'm going to turn it over to you, Josh, and Salam. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Anna. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Uh, Anahita, and thank you so much, uh, Farnoosh and Hirbod, for joining me today in this conversation. Thank it's you, a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. I'll say it's a long time in coming because we encountered one another, or I'll say me and the two of you, um, at the power plant. Um, you, uh, you know, you seem to come every season to see our exhibitions, um, have attended various events and programs. Um, but uh, I was so delighted when I learned that, um, that you are active collectors of art. And, uh, and then in conversation with Anahita, this, this idea to have a trio of talks, which um, at the end of this, I'll talk about the other two. Um, so you're really the first of three um, in this series. And so I wonder um, if you could speak, each of you, uh, just about yourselves a little bit. Um, so that we have some context uh, when we start talking about collecting. Um, so I don't know which of you wants to go first. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is your bot. Uh, I'll make it brief. Um, I'm 43 and I've been always around art. I'm from an artistic family and my education since I was at, I started the university, I've been in different universities, but it was always around art and business. I own and manage a branding company in the United States for years and still it's active. And uh, since 2017 with Farnoosh, we got religiously into art, start collecting together and then start running project together. And we're very happy of, uh, of this partnership. I yeah. Guess. And this is Farnoosh, I'm 32. I moved to uh, Canada, Toronto in 2017 or 16, 16. And then I studied arts management and curatorial practice. And that's how I met Josh because I was his intern for three months. And then I had my curatorial practice at the power plant. And then I started to just working in this industry after I moved to Canada. So I, I started to do uh, my independent practice for over two years and then now we are open a new space in downtown Toronto called May 10th so it's a new project but besides all of this our main hobby and religious is collecting art so we are living through collecting art so you tell me where you want me to start <laughs> <laughs> well fantastic so I mean I think it's interesting for people to know that 
you know, there are art collectors who are certainly embedded in the art community, but there are also art collectors in all different professions. So, um, you know, art collecting is not only for the art intelligentsia. Exactly. Um, and really, you know, that that first purchase is uh, that it sort of breaks a barrier. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you once you sort of like get over that hump, you bought one thing and it satisfies you. You know, you know that you can buy more. So I wonder if uh, if you could talk about the first work that you maybe you purchased together. It was back in like, 2017. Uh, at the Art Toronto, and then we bought the Ross Bonfti. He's a sculptor based in Toronto, and then yeah, it was a it was a teddy bear made of um, concrete, 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 yes, with a huge knife in the belly. So <laughs> it was. It was rough. very, it was, it was rough, but at the same time, very emotional. Uh, it, was very it, wasn't, emotional. it wasn't very pricey to begin with. Yeah, it was very exactly. affordable. Was, mm, and me and Farnoosh. Under thousand dollars. Yes. Yes. And me and Farnoosh, we've been at the beginning of our journey of being a collector or being in art industry. We start collecting first and then we, we start talking about like we have the capability to run projects with. But also, that was the first piece we bought together i had my collection before and he was collecting some pieces before what as was well. the gallery um, jessica no, no. rebecca, rebecca, Hasek. rebecca Hasek 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 from Hasek london and new york believe. she has like two yes. galleries she had mm. a major role in that buying that we, we made that day she made an amazing clean conversation she acted very very real so we've been very welcome yeah, the relationship. When we were passing by her boots, we saw Ross Bonfi's sculpture, very affordable, beautiful sculpture that attracts us to buy Toronto base, exactly. And then uh, Rebecca made it, made it very easy. She educated us about Ross. She gave us a lot of information and also she offered like we can meet Ross if we want to. And yeah, at the very last day of, um, at the fair. Exactly. She, she and she called us. Artist. We didn't buy the piece. She called us and she said she's calling the artist to come and she wants us to come if we're free to meet the artist. So I really appreciate that day that, that the generous offer of Rebecca and the yeah. gesture that she has done. And I think it has a major role in uh, in welcoming us to to be a collector to be collectors yeah and so i wonder um so i mean you talk about you know uh sort of connecting with with a dealer but then also having that opportunity to to meet and engage with the artist so <clears throat> pardon me does does that figure in like is, is that an important factor for you to to know the artist to know the artist's background or history Partially, yes, a big yes, because it's all about relationships and building those relationships. But partially we collect because, you know, I, I could say that this way. We collect somehow because we love a piece and re we really wanted to have it, but we collect somehow for investing. Mm -hmm. So it's two different aspects, very different aspects, because when we when we buying as an investment, there are different circumstances we have to follow. When we're buying through our head, you know, it's, it's very different. It's, it's a, about the relationship, if we know the artist and then how we build the relationship, how we open the conversation. And most of them become family, friends forever. But mm -hmm. some of them, which are very well known and masters, you know, we, we even never met, but we have some pieces as well. So it's two different directions. I always tell, tell people who they, they, they're interested in collecting or using art as an investment that I, I, I tell them like art, buying a piece of art is like buying a stock from a, from a, a, a big corporation. Yeah, the true. artist is, is the actual shell for that stock. And that art piece that you buy, it's your, your share of participating on, on a success of that artist. It's not, it's not about buying one or two pieces. It's, it's, it's all about being in contact. Yeah. following the artist because mm -hmm. it's your stock even though if it's a, it's a small one yeah. 
it's, it's the stock that is growing. So you, you, need to, you need to watch it. You need to cheer for its, its success. You need to be uh, understanding for the falls if the artist is experiencing and all those stuff. So that's how you see yourself as an investor in art industry, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I wonder, um, you know, when, so when you talk about, um, you know, that there are some artworks that you buy because you simply love them and some works that you buy because you think, you know, over, over the long term, they will increase in value. Um, so now when you think about like your, your living environment, like where you actually live, do you, do you treat those works differently? Do you display yeah. them differently? Do you have like something just are in storage yeah. and so on? I wish we were at our home and I could see, I could show you how, how we arrange everything. We don't have any wall anymore. So, but, the, the yeah. thing is every, every piece we buy, we, we feel some sort of connection with the artist or with the practice or with the art piece by itself. And mm -hmm. the thing is we, we, this connection, it's, it's a ever, never ending uh, relationship. So a lot of times me and Farnish, we recurate yes. our walls. Like we have a, in our sitting room, we have TV and we have like about 50 pieces on, the, on only one wall, but we don't let them stay forever because a lot of times like our mood, our life experiences, yeah. our uh, you know, circumstances getting changed and we start recurating yeah. our walls in right. order to create a better harmony of, of pieces, of a connection between pieces and and our, our true yeah knowledge. something something sometimes it's that and sometimes we um, we just segment them as their material so mm -hmm. we segment mm -hmm. them as the um, pieces on paper or pieces like sculptures we kind of do that somehow but as he said yeah we recreate the walls like time to time because we're buying a lot actively monthly we're buying at least two pieces and then mm -hmm how you have to just manage all of them it's a heck of work you have to just <laughs> think about it and think about it and invest and, you know we have an inventory as well but you want to live with them that's the right thing. so yeah so, then, so i know so i i wonder i also wonder uh, because you mentioned sort of like you know sometimes segmenting based on media do you have like rules for yourselves about what media you will collect and what media you would never collect we have rule of mm. things that we don't buy we don't buy prints yeah this is very okay. clear and we don't we don't buy photographs when when the medium is only photographs we we have photographs as art pieces at you know part of a practice or uh, from a from a strong statement but we don't buy photograph like if, if the medium is photographed, if, 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 if the artist just took a photo of a landscape or a flower. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so okay. for the prints, um, we don't buy digital prints. We buy each. Okay. Yes. So it depends on the edition as well, how many edition it has. So we have certain rules, but it's, it's not on the rock. If you right. love photographs, which is different, which is, you know, which is just a photograph or a digital print. We may buy, I don't know, but as we talk now, we don't buy digital prints. Yes, but, mm -hmm. but again, if we find some practice that we think with our support that that practice can grow, or if we find an artist that would think with our support that artists can have a smoother journey and we're believing their journey, we're, we're gonna buy. So we're not limited to the medium or media by itself. There is a lot of other things that we care because we're believing being around art, buying art, it's it's more like creating your own society. Yeah. You have this privilege to curate the society that you you love to live with. Yeah. Right. So so of course you, you mentioned like not collecting digital prints. So I'm gonna ask this question and I'm sure you'll say no, but just want to make sure. There's been a lot in the news about what are called NFTs non-fungibles um these like digital artworks that only exist in the digital realm and people have paid hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars would would you ever consider we have an NFT? 
Yeah, we, we have digital artworks. We have non-tangible uh, yeah, art Yeah, it wasn't pieces. something, it, 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 it's not something new, really. Because before, mm -hmm. if you want to buy a video art, that's non-tangible as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Buying video art. It's very rare yeah. that you do. We, we even invested on some installation that after after the installation is gone, there's nothing to touch or physically carry home. Yeah, so, it's only experience uh, or publication or whatever. Yes, but. and NFT by itself to us, it's a beginning of a big journey. So I think what we see out there in the market right now, it's a rush of like new iPhone comes to market. A lot of people going in line to have iPhone. Yeah, we, we are buying, uh, we are buying strange things as well. We have, we have a series of uh, concrete vinyls that uh, are playable, but are concrete vinyls from an mm -hmm. artist drama <laughs> base again, Mike Henson. And, you know, that's very strange as well. But for NFT, we need to see more. Mm -hmm. We need mm -hmm. to witness more and then see if we are into that or not. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So. so I'd like to turn now um, to talking about, so we've talked about media, um, but uh, also talk about content and subject matter. So do are, are there particular subjects that really sort of appeal to you more than others that really sort of like, pull you in um yeah but you know when we started we didn't decide for the collection as i said before the collection decided for us so <laughs> as we started we just bought whatever we thought is good investment or we loved it so we just continued that but at some point we could see that it's all about being resilient and it's all about trauma and mental health. Most of the pieces we have, it's about those stuff. But also we have trauma. Jennifer Sherno, which is like about ecosystem. Yes, so. trauma, mm -hmm. mental health. Uh, we have a lot of pieces from LGBTQ community. Yeah, a lot of pieces. Which we respect and we admire. We have pieces about, you know, the historical or political pieces that, that for me and Farnoosh, at the end of the day, the, mass, the message, the, the general message that the artist carried within that practice or art piece it's is important. very important. Yeah, we, it's crucial. We, we want to we be proud of that message. We want to feel mm -hmm. like we are supporting that message. So because it's, it's our wall, it's our home. We're, we're having those pieces. It's like those pieces for us representing people, not the, not the artist by itself, a group of people. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we, we, we have to feel comfortable with this many people in our home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, nice, nice. Um, so I wonder, I know that we have a, a PowerPoint that has uh, a few images. So I'm going to ask the, the powers that be um, if the first image could pop up. Yeah. And, uh, and I wonder if, uh, if the two of you could tell us, um, me and all of our viewers, a little bit more about this particular work. And, you know, um, do you know the artist? Um, you know, have you talked with the artist about this specific work? And then what does the work really mean to you? So this is very specific to us and it's very <laughs> special. That's why I choose it because it's from Iranian artist, Iranian American, let's say, because he is in America for like more than 40 years. Nikki mm. Nukimi, he's based in Brooklyn, New York. And he's in 82, so he's, he's a master. And mm -hmm. um, he's always working about the political agendas, always. And he's Iranian. So we as Iranians, we are always in political agendas. And right. imagine you are an artist and you are an activist artist also. So he is very important for the uh, history of contemporary art of Iran and then history of contemporary art, also American of imperialism, art. capitalism, yes. very, very smart uh, uh, mentor some, somehow. Because first of all, every artist that we buy, either, either we buy from gallery or from, from a, another studio. home, uh, we, we make connection with the artists. We, we want mm -hmm. to meet the artists. We want to have conversation with the 
Yeah. If we don't do that, we don't buy. Because mm -hmm. it's, again, it's very that relationship. It's very important. This is this is very also general. We're just yes. really doing that, yes. but we have like some people that. We and Miki is one of one of those guy that we we admire a lot. His his mentality, the way that he put things down, and the narrative that he has in in his artworks are amazing. It allows you to think. It allows you to imagine. It allows you to discover more thought that there are behind your head. So that's that's how we picked this piece because it shows the whole practice of her, of mm -hmm. Nikki Nujumi. In most mm -hmm. of the pieces you could see uh, men's with uh, oversized suits and they are kind of like political people. And uh, you could see circus, corporate people. corporate people, and you could now you could see nudity as well, somehow mixing mm -hmm. with this piece, which is very new in his practice. But um, yeah, this is this is a whole about this, nudity, this, right? this, Yeah, this piece called Pursuit of Darkness, and a lot of times when at night when we're watching TV or sitting, feeling together, the, the light <laughs> light is dimming down. This piece gets amazingly mysterious and me and Farnish sometimes will sit in front of it to start imagining what could happen in yeah. that woods or in, in that darkness. And it's big, it's huge, it's a huge Yeah, it's, it's, it's I mm -hmm. think. He bought it from house. his studio back in Brooklyn, very recent. Nice. So, so that, uh, before we move on to the next work, I wonder, uh, because you've talked about, so you've purchased things at, you know, an art fair like Art Toronto, uh, you've purchased things directly from artists. You've purchased things in galleries. You've purchased things online. Um, so, uh, are there are there particular sources that you that you feel are um, uh, sort of like a good entry point for mm -hmm. people to begin collecting? And now that you're, you know, well into collecting and really tracking artists. Are there better sources for someone who's like more entrenched? Good conversation with the artist to understand their practice, to understand their dilemma, to understand where they're coming from and where they're trying to go. And then what they want to say. some what of some of some of galleries, they're, they're they're very passionate about the artist who they represent. They they so talking with them, uh, it it helps a lot. So I think. Uh, Art, like many other businesses, it needs a study, it needs education, it needs time spending. And, uh, and after that, you allow the art piece to talk to you. Emotion, mm -hmm. Emotional connection between the piece, the way that it is. They will, you... if you understand the piece, the artist make the conversation with you. For sure. Mm -hmm. It's all about relationship, making the relationship, conversation. It's all about that. And then we nice. have the same conversation with people who they come to our place and see art pieces. It's like it, this, is, this is a never ending process because when you talk to the artist, when you learn a lot, you add up your stuff into it and then someone new come to your home and then they show interest to, to one piece and then you have a beautiful icebreaker to talk more <laughs> deep with, yeah. with the friends that or people that you have in your place. Yeah, I always feel like, you know, art is, um, you know, uh, very often people talk about art being a universal language. And I, I don't know so much that art is as much a universal language as much as it's a wonderful connection point between people, right? Um, it's kind of like the, it's the it in the conversation mm -hmm. um, very often. Absolutely. So I wonder if we go on to the next work in our PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so uh, we haven't had the better picture. So I could say I have to say that the picture doesn't do it justice. Doesn't doesn't tell the story. It's no. it's a gorgeous art piece when you when you see it in person. In person. But yeah. photo wise, this is like it's a very one, quality. Yeah, <laughs> it's one one in a million basically. It doesn't. Yeah, matter. I think I think we all we all know that you know. Not everything photographs that well, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but given, given that this is the image we're, we're talking about, I wonder again, sort of like, you know, do you know the artist? Um, you sure. have a relationship with the artist then? What does this work in particular mean for you? This is, this is a great choice. Uh, me and Farnish have been very interested in indig uh, indigenous works. 
for years. And we've been, we've been going to different galleries, museum festivals and stuff like that, and always looking at indigenous works. What we found majority of indigenous works are saying the same, repeating the same subject lines for years and years and years with all due respect to the subject matter, but we think they're losing the opportunity of, of introducing the real uh, motif, the real real idea of being indigenous. And then mm -hmm. after, after that many years, one day, this piece calls the fight is over. And even the title in the middle of the piece, it's it's embroidery. And that basically it's a Tyvek uh, paper, plastic paper that we use in our daily basis, uh, life and construction, you see everywhere. And then you mm -hmm. see amazing indigenous motif, it's embroidery over Tyvek which to us, it's like exact act of indigenous people. They, they had their motif in their surrounding, like a landmark, basically. So we saw like, oh, beautiful indigenous. And there is, a, there is a saying in the middle of each piece of this series. They're all mostly on Tyvek and they're all embroideries. But there's a saying in each of them, which is the title of the piece as well. This, this is... Mm -hmm. uh, the fight, is over. the fight is over. When we read that, when we saw the, the, the genius uh, uh, mentality behind the artist, we both just looked at each other. It was expensive at a time and it was like, we want it. Yeah. We want to have this. We want to proudly put it so, on a wall because this is the exact cause we support. The fight is over and let's, let's now See the landmark. Let's now see the actual touch of indigenous in our life. So this is yeah. Monette, Caroline Monet. She is Franco-Canadian artist based in Montreal. We bought this piece from our Toronto last year as well, which, which was a hybrid program. Uh, we bought that from Blue Division. So yeah, this is also, we don't know. We Coco. made a really good conversation with Tyler. This is the time that I was saying like the, the galleries can exactly. introduce the mm. practice to you. So we don't know the artists in person. Right, um, right. Love it. Yeah, this is a, and I think Herbod, you, you raise a really good point about, you know, indigenous art that, um, you know, I talk very often about contemporary art with a capital C or a small C. Um, the idea of, you know, contemporary with a capital C is kind of, you know, the stuff that we see in a textbook of contemporary art. Um, and uh, and this is, so I'll say in indigenous Canadian art, very often you see uh, very traditional motifs repeated, um, you know, ravens, bears, eagles, like very significant uh, symbols. Um, and I think sometimes that sort of like fits this more capital C textbook sense of what contemporary indigenous artwork looks like. But this, uh, this work really strikes me as like that small C, this is a living artist who's really making stuff about, you know, a current issue like right now. Um, exactly. So it has a real freshness. Um, exactly. And, and, yeah. and you know, personally, I've, I've, I've been involved with indigenous people and their ceremonies because they're, they're very pure. All these motives, they all have a meaning behind them. They're very, very mm -hmm. much connected to the root of the universe. And having these motifs around you help you to a little, you know, loosen up and just understanding the, the real meaning of the universe. And I'd love to see more and more work like this around us especially in North America, the land of indigenous people. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, well, we, we want to see, and I think this, this was for us a, a, a good act of support. Yeah, and it was a good investment as well. Yes. Because Coco, as you might know, she just won the Sobeys. Right course. after we bought this piece. So she, oh, wow. Yeah, I think she will be one of the most important contemporary artists with a small C. Um, mm -hmm. Canada very soon. Um, so well, I'll say hopefully, hopefully, you know, so many of the artists that you do collect will become contemporary with a capital C, right? It's like these are hopefully the artists who will will be in the next round of textbooks. Yeah, yeah, um, de definitely. So yeah. that we can learn from them. So I wonder, there's one more image um, that I'd love to to hear about. Um, I think we talked about this briefly 
you know, in a planning conversation. And, uh, you know, it just, it, it really, it captured me uh, so much. Um, so I wonder again, you know, if you could talk about, you know, what yeah. this artwork, um, you know, sort of like uh, how, how this relates to you, how, how uh, you relate to it. It's a, it's a long story though, but if you Cindy Phoenix, she is also a Canadian artist, but she's based in LA right now. So mm -hmm. she moved to America, I think, two years ago to obtain her MFA in Chicago. So uh, we met her, I believe, in back in 2016 or 17 Papier. again at the Papier. And she was start at her career, like professional career with a commercial gallery, um, which is very, uh, very good friend of us also. And we just saw a small pieces on paper from this artist. And we were like, she's crazy. What she's doing exactly? Good what crazy, is she means. Exactly, good crazy. And then again, we start a conversation with the galleries. And Ooh. the galleries, Oog, is one of our best friends, my mentor forever uh, mm -hmm. right now. And he built a relationship also through the the artist with us. So for now we have, I think four or five pieces from Cindy Phoenix. Cindy is like growing so, so fast, fast and yeah, very exactly. strong. So she started uh, with collage. You could find mm -hmm. it when she's painting, she's doing collage with the color and with her palette. So uh, the first piece we bought was on paper and it was kind of paint and collage also. And the second piece was... It wasn't even framed. It yeah, was exactly. the, the piece of cardboard paper was on the wall yeah, in Papier. Exactly. It was like... <laughs> it, it attracted us so much. We started making conversation. It was a, actually the, the beginning of our friendship with Oog yeah, exactly. Gallery in Montreal because he's a brilliant gallerist and he had a major role in educating us about Cindy's practice and many other artists' practices. So that was mm -hmm. another example. We didn't coordinate all these settings, but it's funny because <laughs> this three piece has supporting a lot of our exactly, conversation. So exactly. we made that connection with Book, and then we start supporting Cindy because the, the piece that we bought at that time was very, very affordable. It very was like thousand. Let me let me tell you, it was like thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. So it's very affordable, but we didn't know anything about the artist. So he started educating us constantly. He was sending us every month in a publication about Cindy and what she's doing and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Even sometimes he called, uh, he offered us like to jump oh, on a call, yeah. on a conversation for him to explain things with us. We didn't invest mm. much on Oog. Yeah, we just so Oog was very generous as, as far as when he saw like a connection, good connection with a potential customer like us, with the artist, he put a lot of effort into- To just educating you. Yep. No matter if you're buying or not. You just want right. to present the artist in a very good manner. And I really love that. So the second piece we bought from Cindy was a small board. It was three thousand dollars. And then uh, we gradually got, we, yeah. we follow Cindy's practice. We're very proud of his grow, uh, her growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we established relationship with her. Start getting to conversation with her. So we're a stockholder. Right? Yeah. And right. Piece amazingly without it. It came by heart. But this piece. We bought this piece when Cindy just started. It started. She was preparing it for a show. No, it wasn't like that. Go ahead. The say the third piece we bought. She was in the first semester of the school, MFA. It was like fifteen thousand dollars. Seventeen. Seventeen. Mm. I want to show you how she just jacked up the prices every year, but not she, the market. She was the market, to. right? Of course. Not so, and uh, this piece is her thesis show. She, mm -hmm. she had just one piece for her thesis show and this piece was all about her MFA. So this is very big. It's like two- Two and a half a meter wide or maybe around three meters three wide. Meters. So it's, it's really huge. Right. And it's all textile. So <laughs> when she started this piece, she was still at the school. And we didn't mm -hmm. know what what we what she is going through. 
but mm -hmm. we had trust because of that relationship. Oog with Oog with Cindy exactly. We bought this piece three times more expensive, you know, than than what we paid for for her pieces. We're very proud. It, we wait for about eight months. Yeah. He her. told us, and she also, okay, this is my test, this showpiece, and I have to show it in my school, and I have to show it there and that, back in Montreal, in Chicago. So the piece was constantly <laughs> in travel for six months. Right. But the amount of publication this piece got was mm. crazy. And now she is represented also by Nino Mia Gallery, which is one of the well-known galleries in the whole world. And we are super proud. So this started was like a very simple conversation, very cheap piece, like very mm -hmm. affordable, not cheap, I'm sorry, very affordable piece. But then us and her, we ended up here. Now we could sell this piece for like $80,000 right mm -hmm. now when I'm talking with you. So it was a very good investment, but also we really love what she's doing. And her main statement is all about being resilient again. And the trauma mm -hmm. and the monsters. She creates monsters um, in all her practice, I'll right? I'll tell you that, that we, when we bought the, the piece, we saw it for the first time after a year. Yes. And the piece was <laughs> a lot more beautiful than what we had imagined. And that. let me tell you this, when we receive this piece, we have to leave for LA. So we haven't had the time to just enjoy the piece, but we love it because we watch it for six months everywhere. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Sorry, we nice. we're in love with the with our stories, so we talk too much. No, that's fantastic. I mean, I think I think it's really important for for folks to know that you know if you buy something because you, you simply love it or it feels like it's promising. Yes. That, and, then, and then when that artwork can then travel and be seen by so many and be reproduced, uh, you know, not only, you know, is that a glory for the artist, but, you know, it's like a thumbs up or a check mark or a gold star for the collector who, who knew, who, who anticipated that this was really something special. Okay. And in, in, the, in its traveling and in its being reproduced, that also helps increase its value. Um, so not only its aesthetic value that, that you love it so, but that, you know, there's also a financial gain as well. Exactly. Yeah, um, exactly. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, I think it's important for collectors to know that sometimes an artwork, you buy it and it will retain its value. You know, maybe over time it will go up, maybe over time it will go down, yeah, exactly. you know. As you say, it's sort of like a little bit like the like investing in stock. Exactly. That you know things become more popular and less popular, and you you sort of have to wait and see. Um, but if you buy it because you love it, that's like you've already won. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In in the process. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, before we wrap things up completely, I just want to circle back. You mentioned at the very beginning that you're uh, that you're starting off this new venture in the downtown of Toronto. So I wonder if you could just speak a few minutes about that. What, what, what is that experience going to be? <laughs> so we've so, been into this industry and we've been watching um, you know, the industry for past five years. Uh, we wasn't sure, we, we were like, is it the right thing to open in the space? So we were thinking about that for five years and we wanted to be more than a gallery. So you mm -hmm. we, yeah, me, 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 me and Farnus, we've been, as I said, uh, and, and Farnus said, we've been in love with what we were doing. And that's yeah. how we got little by little, step after step into the industry. And uh, we, we understood like there are some struggles in, in middle of, you know, that in the industry, because industry is like right now what we're experiencing, it's like commercial galleries, the model it's, it's been set on the 1980s, 1990s, and it wasn't mm -hmm. touched since then. In institutional uh, galleries, uh, their, their mentality, their behavior is more toward, you know, brands, donors, and stuff like that. So a lot of times the idea get dictated to, to the galleries because of those 
money that are coming and museums are working in a different aspects and a then different we, level. with different levels and we notice like the only group of artists that the talented base industry basically that is not mm -hmm. using agency or visual artists like actor actresses singers even athletes they're using agencies because agencies are helping them to grow their business but visual artists they don't have it so me and Farnish we were constantly thinking like this this old models needs to be changed during mm -hmm. COVID, we had time to write a business plan. And the business plan was about, you know, having a new model of commercial gallery that works as an really agency, hybrid. hybrid, exactly. And also perform like an institutional, uh, uh, you know, gallery as well. So we, in order, instead of going and ask for donors or getting grants, we thought about it like we can bring sponsors, people that mm -hmm. would appreciate the same practice of the, uh, you know, of the artist practice, people who they had the similar life experience before they can come and sometimes invest on uh, some of the art project that they don't have a strong model of, you know, money-making model behind it. It's not commercial. So, right. exactly. so uh, we spent a lot of time, we talked with many established artists, many executives in the industry. We're lucky that we're surrounded with good people always good people. And they gave us a lot of educations and mentored us with, with, with our business plan. It took us like eight months and we had an amazing business plan done. And we introduced it to one of our greatest uh, friend, Mozier from TAS. It's an, a very popular development company in LA. And they- In Toronto. Yes, in, in, I'm sorry, in LA, in Toronto, in Canada, basically. And they, They've been generous, they read the business plan, they loved it, and they said they're going to be our lead sponsor in this project. Oh, and fantastic. Opening door to that. So, and after that, we have done, we, we work with many different artists. Again, our, our doors are always open to people. We're, we're saying, like, this is, this is, this is a group work. It, it so, can't be me and Farnish project, yeah, it's everybody's project. Yeah, basically, in a very simple description, the gallery is a hybrid gallery between institutional practice and a commercial practice in the industry. So we do represent some artists, but we're mostly doing uh, group exhibitions. Curated. We're not curated group exhibition. I'm not the only curator of this space. So we're asking the other curators to, even the curator of education, we are asking to come and uh, give us the programming for our space. We don't want to just show art and style, you know. We have educational programs, we have residencies very soon, we have grants and scholarships very soon. So that's why we don't want to call it a gallery. It's more mm -hmm. a project or just maintenance. So mm -hmm. um, we will have Canadians. Americans, Iranians. So it's not specifically for Iranian art scene or Iranian Canadian art scene or Canadian art scene. So we're trying to go more than that beyond and then bring more international art mm -hmm. shows. We are trying to do sistering galleries with the galleries back in Europe or at the state to just do it like in an yeah. international manner. At the same time, we had the privilege to be involved with different boards and different institutions. We were always talking like, please to galleries and institutions, don't call each other uh, competitions because right. we're sharing a very tiny market share together. And uh, there are many peoples in living in Canada and generally North America that we have to take each other's hands, expand the market and then start inviting those people. So. Another motto or model of us in this gallery is to invite people, first time collectors, yeah. to, mm -hmm. to participate. And we've been lucky, even before we opening our gallery, we turned three collectors, three regular people in past few months to a collector. And now one of them has like five, six pieces. The other one has about eight pieces. We got best advice from Oog when we started Oog says like a lot of times clients comes and spend 20 bucks yeah, it's a on long buying a magazine and it's then really they way. ended up with a spending for thousands of thousands of dollars one of the collectors that we with one of the people he, he wasn't in art at all we turned mm -hmm. him to be a collector he spent a 200 Canadian dollar at the first project and now he spent 
$35,000 in a masterpiece within, within, a, within six months. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this, this is the area that we are so proud and we're gonna religiously continue our practice to invite more people from different backgrounds. And also educate people exactly. about the collecting, about how do you, nice. just, you just come to the gallery. You know, galleries are not only for certain people. Right. <laughs> all the people you know what i'm telling because exactly. you know, there is a manner there is a gesture in the industry that art is for academic people or art is for art lover people but i'm against all of that art yeah art we we all have we all have the capacity to to look with our eyes and decide what makes our heart sing exactly. what, what feels right you know? it's all about exactly it's all about the emotion so Everybody could be emotional. So everybody could engage with art and being emotional. You know, they may hate a piece or they may love <laughs> a piece. And that's the key. That's all yeah. about rising the emotion. I forgot to mention that first beta actually uh, encouraged us of, of, uh, of having a meeting and talking about the future. And then beta, mm -hmm. they're, they're an amazing couple. We do yeah, that. They're, they're supportive yes. of art in Toronto, AGO, like in power plant everywhere. So, we're so very I proud. think in what we're doing, a lot of people have roles, tiny, mm -hmm. big roles, but we appreciate everybody's help, everybody's help. And let me tell you, Gates Sam. Yes. Gaten, <laughs> you know how I love her. Gaten, one of what well, was the only person, let's say that, was the only person was very welcoming to us. No, that's right. Uh, not, so of course, as Gaten Verna, the director of the power plant, my my yeah. boss, and I will say, good friend. <laughs> yeah, good friend. Well, so I, I see we're 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 at the time to wrap things up. I am. Yeah, ever so thankful uh, to both of you, uh, Farnoosh and Herbod. Uh, you are wonderful, wonderful people, wonderful collectors. Um, I'm so excited for your new venture. So when we can, we'll clink wine glasses together and celebrate um, that. Yeah. Um, before I wrap up, a uh, big special thanks, of course, to Anahita um, and Yvonne with the Toronto Outdoor Art Fair. Um, I encourage everyone who is tuned in please go to the toronto art fair outdoor art fair please you know purchase something or look or get into conversation with artists um that's really the best way to like feel like you belong because you do belong yeah um just reminding the audience this is the first of three programs in this series of art collectors in conversation so um again uh Farnoosh Talahi and Herbod Human. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, there will be a conversation between me and Aaron Milrad, um, who goes way, way back in collecting in Toronto, and and you know he's traveled, of course, and collected from elsewhere. Um, uh, so that is promises to be a very promising uh, conversation. Um, and then next Saturday at 10:30 a.m. Uh, I'll be in conversation with uh, Rudy Adler, who is the CPO with Wealth Simple, uh, an online uh, trading investment platform. So, um, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, thank you once again, Farnoosh and Herbod. And uh, thank you again to Anahita and Yvonne. <laughs>